Alrighty, welcome back everyone. It is Laughing Games here. I am back and it is time for another StarCraft 2 1 vs 1 replay cast. Today we are going to be having a TVZ between two of my favorite European players, each for different reasons. And uh, yeah, let's just introduce the players. In the top right hand side of the map, Pillars of Gold. We have got Soul playing for Team Emkers, Makers. And in the bottom left, we have got Sort of, the Swedish Zerg player. Played a lot in Korea, but now he's back in Europe. So playing in, in a lot more European Cups. And yeah, it's exciting to have Soul versus Sort of. I'll admit, one of the main reasons why I chose to cast this game was because I really enjoy late game TVZ and that Soul is pretty much the Terran as far as going into the late game is concerned. He's incredibly confident in his macro, he's very very uh, quick with his multitasking and everything and it's fun to see how Zerg players try and counter that because all Zerg players tend to have different approaches against a late game Terran at the minute so that's why I wanted to see how Sword of's gonna do it because he is also a bit of a late game Zerg player. And so we should have a, a nice mix. Let's double check that the music was on. And we are continuing forward. So yeah, Soul and Sword of two very good macro players. I'd say Soul is the favorite in this match because uh, he's had better results lately, like doing doing constantly better in online cups than Sword of, who hasn't had like a super good result in any major tournament, I'd say, in quite a while. He's He's played in the odd online cup and stuff like that, but he hasn't, like, won, like, an ESL Pro Tour or anything like that. So, that's why I think Soul would be considered the favorite. However, sort of, it's tough to know how well he's gonna play. And, ladies and gentlemen, as we have the Reaper moving across the map right now, let's try and hit, uh, 100 likes on this video for Soul versus sort of what I think is gonna be an epic late-game TVZ. That's uh, the reason why I chose to cast this match. And then, uh, yeah, of course, if you're new to the channel and you enjoy StarCraft 2 content, go ahead and subscribe. Reaper comes in for Soul, gonna start harassing one of those drones, gets a few shots off on one, forcing it to turn into a spore crawler, but then, of course, sort of cancels that, uh, just as a way to keep the Reaper from killing that drone. Now, if we take a look, there is a factory on the way for Soul, so he's going to be building that. And already, from the Terran player, we see a third command center going up. So a very macro-oriented play from Soul, which I think is uh, something that we can just come to expect. I'd say Soul's consistency to macro does make him a little bit vulnerable versus a Zerg player who might try something cheesy against him, like might try a Nidus, might try a Roach Ravager Flood or something like that. For now, though, we do see Soul. He's got his third command center on the way. All the while, sort of, has actually been pinned away from taking his third base just yet. So we're actually seeing a very quick lair from sort of as he's continuously mined gas. So potentially we're going to see like a Mutalisk play out of the out of the Zerg player. We could see something else. However, a very quick lair is a deviation from the standard for sort of. Usually it's the third base, then whatever tech the Zerg's going to go for. Soul will spot the third base and say, okay, so things things are a little bit abnormal, but they're not completely. It's, an, it's nothing extremely radical, like two base muter or anything like that, which even does get a third base most of the time. Now, Soul's third command center is done. He's going to want to make that an orbital sooner rather than later. Start cashing and <laughs> start collecting them fat mule checks that you get. And if we do take a look, we see there is a... Uh, there is a Hellions and a Reaper moving out. There we go. I toggled the music. I was wondering why we didn't have any music in the background. Queen's trying to shoot away the Reapers and Hellions, but Soul does manage to get a Creep Tumor, his second one so far. The Hellions and the Hellions deal a little bit extra damage now to those Creep Tumors, which is quite significant. And now if we take a look, Soul, he's just getting up Stimpak. He'll be throwing up his third barracks and things like that. As far as how the Terran's playing, though, this is quite a greedy play from Soul. Getting up a third CC quicker than the Zerg's third. Uh, just really delaying his tech and everything like that. And that is absolutely a greedy play. 
However, sort of isn't the kind of Zerg to punish that, which maybe I think if you were trying, if you were going up against Soul in a match, that trying to say cheese him out might be a very viable strategy, in my opinion, as we see he's getting up double Ebays as he gets up his double barracks. So really, really going hard on the macro is Soul. And now we're going to see the Hellions of Soul try and dive on into sort of space. And Soul actually made a few extra Hellions a few Hellions more than normal with going up to eight as opposed to the usual four or six. I'd say six is the standard these days, but he is going to get some damage with him done. And that's because sort of has played it very greedily just with a few lings, not really enough to catch these Hellions out. He is going to try and surround these Hellions. Banelings are wandering forward and do actually get a good connection on those Hellions. However, a lot of the lings did die. There was still six drone losses. Looks like the Liberator was killed off in the main base, however, so sort of does deflect that, and I'd say it actually went okay for sort of, just based off the fact that eight Hellions is pretty darn expensive, the Liberator was killed, and only six drones? Uh, yeah, not really the best. The Lings went down, the Banelings went down too, uh, but yeah, I'd say it adds up to being quite okay for sort of. We do see Mutas on the way, and I think these Mutas will be pressured to, or will be needed to put some pressure onto Soul, to really pressure the Terror and shut down drops, get some value, because of Soul's really good economy that's gonna be roaring up soon. Once his production all kicks in, it's gonna be a little bit concerning for sort of how he's gonna have to basically shut down the Terran when his own economy has been delayed, quite notably. Now we do see Soul, he's building a lot of missile turrets, which I do like to see two in the main, two in the natural, and then just one at the third for now, but his army will be at his third. So I really enjoy his decision to do that. I think turrets are quite a good investment uh, if you're at a lower level of StarCraft 2. I don't think you could go wrong with building too many turrets because, uh, in a sense, actions cost more at a lower level than, uh, than a missile turret does. Like, uh, just because of how much attention you have to pay to try and shut down the mutas and things like that. Investing in the turrets might actually save you money if you spend those actions instead of defending the mutas, doing things like dropping your mules, building SCVs, throwing up a new CC quicker than if you were kind of focused chasing down the mutas. So that's why, that's why I do enjoy it when players tend to go for quite a bit of static defense when doable. Now... We do take a look, sort of still is only on three bases. He should be getting up his fourth soon, and there we see it. All the while, Soul is about to have his 1-1 done, so the aggression from the Terran should be starting, and we already see him moving across the map. It's gonna be Bio for Soul, pushing into sort of Lingbane mute account. Of course, the main component of sort of's army is the mutas now because he invested into these so early on. He still needs to see some good value out of them. All the while, though, Sword of is actually planning a bit of a counterattack. Going to be rolling some Banelings towards Soul's base, but Soul does have Marines and a Widowmine. Perfect position to intercept those, even splits those Marines at the last second. The Banelings actually just rolled on by. They maybe could have at least connected with those Marines if Sword of was paying attention to them. Soul, in standard Soul fashion, is getting up his fourth command center. That's just what he does. He's a very macro-oriented Terran instead of trying to kill the Zerg off of three bases like was really common in the past. It's more now, Terrans are much more fine with macroing, which really is a breath of fresh air. Uh, I really enjoy this sort of standard we see which Terran macros into the late game, Zerg macros into the late game, and everyone's happy as we get epic TVZs like this. Widowmine does hit those Mutas, so the Mutas aren't actually happy with a connection killing off one of those. They're still moving around trying to get some damage. Soul has got Marines that should be able to respond to the threat though as they come towards the natural. Sort of's flock is getting to the point which it can shut down the missile turrets, so Soul will really have to be in position to help zone these away. And for the Terran, being in position to help zone away the Mutas is either putting aggression towards your opponent, or yeah, it's either putting damage to towards your opponent to sort of basically make them not attack you because you're busy attacking them, or just to actually respond to those drops, ensure your units are in the right position. However, I think Soul will much prefer putting the pressure onto his opponent, so we very well may see a move out soon. There's a chance he could just sit back and wait for 2-2, which would be very reasonable. The Terran army really becomes much stronger when 2-2 upgrades are done, and Soul is just securing up his fourth base. So going for a double drop, not a big push or anything like that, so he wants to retain pressure, but then he also knows now isn't the time 
for a big attack. We see the Mutas are coming on in for sort of. They're going to be picking off one of these refineries. That's a pain for Soul to have to rebuild. They're going to get a few SCVs. They try and fly into the main, but Soul has reacted, sending the Mutas away again for now. We're seeing a couple of drones going down to a drop in the bottom right-hand side. These Marines picking off a Queen, going to load into the Medivac. They do narrowly escape. There's also this extra drop moving across the map for Soul. Going to be heading towards the main base of Sword of Flying right over the Spore Crawler. Is a little bit risky. However, these Queens are, and drones are going to have to run away while Sword of reacts to this. All of a sudden, we see the effect of this drop of Soul as everything from Sword of is moving back if we take a look at the minimap. Soul might even get away with most of these units, and wow, it looks like he does. Just gonna bounce towards the natural, which is just crazy as he continues this drop on, unloading the Marines into a very beautiful spot at the back of the third base on Pillars of Gold. So really good trades for Soul with these units. He gets 16 drones in all, really hurting Sword of's economy. Now, Sword of's economy was just hurt. He's not out of this game by any means yet. I am concerned for sort of when a big push comes his way though because he did just invest a ton of gas into Mutalisk. He's making another 11 Mutas. He's going to be in the high 20s for his Mutalisk count, which is going to be a very nice tool for the Zerg player to work with. At the same time, investing in so many Mutas does reduce your Baneling count. So when the Terran comes in for a direct push, you're going to have a hard time stopping that as the Zerg player. The Mutas are going to have to see value somewhere. Soul, while this is going on, getting up a fifth command center because that's what Soul does. Actually, getting up multiple extra CCs now. One thing I'd like to point out, though, is how Soul hasn't actually started his 2 2. I get the feeling that this is something that will have slipped his mind. He's going to really need to stay on top of this and start his 2 2 upgrade or his 3 3 upgrade soon, as uh, those upgrades are so important. If you're macroing up like Soul is right now, you wouldn't forget those purposely. Uh, yeah, Soul, we gotta see those 3-3 upgrades start. He's invested in extra CCs, extra starports, but still no 3-3 upgrades, which is a concern for me. I, I wonder when we're gonna see those upgrades. Look at this, he's just throwing on more and more CCs. This is the modern Terran, which I love to see. There we go, now we see the plus 3 attack start. We'll see if plus 3 armor is gonna start soon for Soul. Uh, he's definitely got the money for it, so we should be seeing that. Yeah, we gotta see those upgrades start rolling in, so, like, uh, I, I really enjoy how he's playing, but, uh, this could come back to bite him, potentially. I mean, so far, there's no indication that it's, like, a massive issue he's forgot his upgrades. It's not like the Zerg player has got a hive on the way or anything, sort of has made an infestation pit, but he hasn't started a hive, so his 3-3 is still quite a way. There we go, the hive does start up. Soul still no plus 3 armor, though, which, uh, does baffle me a little bit, so... Forgetting his upgrades, while this is going on, though, of course, both players are doing a million other things, sort of moving around with his mutas, trying to find some damage, which he very well can do. He's got 27. At the same time, Soul shuttling triple Thors around the map to try and hunt down these mutas. The mutas are going to be getting widow mines, or picking off widow mines, but also eating shots, which is not cost effective for the Zerg. You need to pick off those widow mines without eating shots, otherwise. You're just trading inefficiently now. We're going to be seeing sort of looking to push Soul with his Lings and Banes. I mean, he does a good job baiting out the Widow Mines. However, there is too much here for the Terran. The Banelings are going to roll on in. Mutas are coming in to help out too. I'm not sure if this is the fight for Sword of. The Banelings do get okay connections, but overall I feel that was not a good fight for Sword of. It cost him a lot of Lings and Banes. I think his units overcommitted a little bit. Then he saw there was no way home. He tried to make the best of it, though. We see Soul just throwing up yet another CC. It's Command Center City for Soul as he's throwing on more and more of these buildings. Uh, sort of looking for a counterattack towards this location. There's a PF and a Widow Mine, though, so I don't think it's going to get too much done. Uh, yeah, the Banelings get a few SCVs. A lot more Lings and Banes are coming in as Sort of is pushing into multiple locations. Banelings actually chasing Widow Mines, trading out okay against them. This fifth or fourth base lo location of Soul does actually get picked off. Trader Widow Mines. A nice attack from Sort of, killing off a lot of Soul's economy. However, Sort of has got to be careful with these mutas. He's magic boxing one of these Thors, but I think it's best he get out of dodge as mass liberators are coming in for Soul. I did not see this coming. Soul all of a sudden has made eight liberators with his mass starports and actually has enough to just chase the mutas away in the sky. Crazy from a uh, crazy, crazy move from Soul. This is not something you see between uh, the triple Thor medivac and the um, liberators to chase away the mutas. 
This is, uh, this is not something I've seen in a while. Or really ever. I mean, usually the Terran will chase the Mutas with like one or two Thors, but Soul's like, I got three. Let's chase him with three Thors. Uh, Widowmind Drop gets intercepted. Nice move from Sword of picking that off. He's also been keeping Soul down to four bases, which is quite nice. Even just, not necessarily the economic value of pushing Soul off this location, but the pain of him having to reestablish it. The pain of him having to pay attention to this location as he knows it's vulnerable. He knows sort of will probably try and exploit this weak position again as it's just an orbital command now. The Zerg is definitely going to come on in. These Lings are a little bit preemptive though as there's still Marines, the Mass Liberator, so sort of turns around. Uh, Lings are going to actually try and get some of the SCVs, so getting some good damage done. While this is going on, sort of has got his 3-3 upgrades coming out, so his units are going to get a significant boost. Soul's plus 3 armor isn't even done yet. Uh, Lings still giving Soul a fair bit of grief, sort of going to be looking to push towards the 5th base location. There's a Thor and a ton of Widow Mines, which are actually going to really bite into the Mutalist, getting some good shots. However, this base is going to be vulnerable, so we're seeing a very nasty attack from sort of. Soul has been trying to establish himself in the late game, but it's just not been happening so far. Sort of has been getting consistent damage done against Soul. We see 23 SCVs go down. Soul's trying to float a command center over to take another location, but he hasn't even been able to defend his current bases as is. We see him having to float over more orbitals that he invested in. He's got uh, this command center, which has got to float back. And I think Soul might have finally had enough. He's deciding to push in towards the Zerg player. But as we've seen, Sword of isn't just playing with Lingbane Muta anymore. He's now going to have 3 3 Lings with Adrenal Glands. He's even got a Viper in the mix. He's got an Ultra Cavern done too, so we could very well see those coming. And he may have what he needs just to shut down Soul's army. So if Sword of takes a good fight here, he could simply win the game. It's not going to be easy to take a fight into this many liberal and Widow Mines, but he could definitely do it. Muta's coming in, going to clean up the Marauders that were poking towards the front. There's a counterattack going on towards this location once again. Soul being constantly harassed. This base might even die. The Ling is putting out so much damage. Look how fast they tear into that command center. As uh, it doesn't have building armor and the Lings are 3-3. Adrenal glands that base didn't stand a chance. There's a few ghosts out now for Soul, I guess, to get snipes off. Banelings coming in, Lings coming in to help pick those off though, and so sort of loses a base, however, Soul has lost multiple locations, and the Zerg has got a lot of bases to fall back onto. We see nice Liberator harassment from Soul, trying to regain control in this game. He's also still got his push going on to the front, but I feel like sort of should be able to clean this one up, as uh, it is mainly just Liberators, the mines are all gone, there's not enough bio on the ground to support this, and sort of will end up pushing Soul back. Soul's just rallying everything across the map, but he doesn't have enough. He's going to have to reconsolidate. And I'm worried about Soul having to reconsolidate because this entire game, he's just been chasing his tail. Sort of has been playing a very good TVZ. We see the Liberator still harassing in the bottom right, but that's getting dealt with now. Soul feels so pressured to be out on the map, he's just running out with everything. But it's scary every time he goes for an attack because he's not attacking into some weak Zerg. He's attacking into a Zerg who's on Hive Tech. These are 3-3 three, three Lings and Banes, which is very significant when these fights happen. We do see Soul has actually just taken a good fight. He's pushing him to mainly Marines. What sort of wouldn't give for a single Ultralisk right now? Uh, we do see Banelings rolling forward. Soul's going to have to split like a god. So far, they're pretty good. But he does have to end up retreating, lifting units into the Medivacs to keep him alive. Widowmind's even burrowing, though. So Soul is trading out pretty well against the Mutas. Uh, these 2-2 two -two Mutas, though, are actually going a lot further than you'd think. And Soul still hasn't been able to make the attack happen. He's trying to secure more and more bases, but like he hasn't even made this a planetary. This is an orbital. He's just got an extra PF sitting here doing nothing. He's making like nothing but Marines and Medivacs. And there's Ultras on the way for Sort of. This is just not Soul's game. We see Sort of playing really, really well, picking off this base again. He completely threw Soul's macro off and has finally been able to conquer him. I feel as sort of comes in for an attack, he will have to retreat. But once there's a few Ultras with this army, I'm gonna be real concerned for Soul. We're even gonna see another one of these orbitals die. And Soul, the macro Terran, who's usually so good at getting himself established, just faltered to the attacks of sort of again and again. And until he's got really nothing left, I mean, he's hanging on, yes, technically. He's got this base in the top left, but like, 
Soul is so far away from focusing on his macro. He's just he's just going rogue, drop like stimming marines down to the bottom right, charging across the map with everything that he has. Like he's not even making this a planetary fortress. Usually that's Terran's first priority, trying to keep their macro going, trying to make sure those planetaries are being built. But now we see sort of coming forward with these ultras. There's no chitinous plating on them yet. The widow mines are actually getting a lot of damage done to the ultras, so that one's surprisingly well for Soul. The banelings actually all get gutted. Oh my god, what a great fight for Soul. All things considered, however, I'm still not sure it's going to be enough for the Terran player, as uh, the Marine count isn't actually that high. This spine is putting out so much damage. Looks like that this base will actually get picked off. At the same time, though, there's a lone Ultralisk counterattacking, hit biting into Soul's weak economy. The Terran player just got some some good damage done, and he's actually going to try and keep this fight going. Soul the Madman is really trying to pressure sort of right now. This Ultra has actually been caught derping out a little bit there. Soul is committed with these marines, with these medivacs. He's going to load on up and I guess try and unload into the main as the mutas are in hot pursuit. However, with 18 mutas still out on the map, they will be able to deal with these marines. Even though they're 3-3 three, three marines, the mutas are 2-2, two, two, so they actually hold up quite well. We're going to see a ling counterattack from sort of. Soul has been really making this game scrappier than I thought it would be. I thought he was just going to die. However, we're seeing a ling counterattack. There's too many ultras now, I feel for sort of pushing on in. Soul took the first good fight against the Ultras before Chitinous Plating was done. Now there is just a lot of Zerg. We take a look at the supply. Soul has been consistently down for and he's half the supply of sort of we see the mutas find the base in the top left no turrets it's just turning into a pf soul is down to 19 scvs he's still scrapping this one out but at some point sort of will be able to consolidate soul is gonna wear thin he's having to float over another orbital his uh his list of bases grows thin and we see yeah the terran force nothing super impressive sort of has been having a second to breathe right now all he really needs to do is take a take a frontal fight against what soul has and i think that'll be gg we see the terran getting swarmed by the lings by the by the ultras the mutas pursuing in sort of has got good value with his mutas this game and really kept soul done a great game from sort of gg gets called really really great match from sort of bringing down soul uh sort of playing like this i'm excited to see future matches of his Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe if you made it to the end of the video. And then, of course, join the Discord, which is linked in the description. Consider becoming a member if you want to support the channel. Uh, that can be done by clicking the link in the description. I'll see you next time. This has been Laughing Games. Thanks for watching.